Since it's nearly the summer, let's take the train to the beach. No, not Coney Island, the Rockaways. And what better train to take than the A train? It is the longest line in the system, stretching 32 miles from Far Rockaway to Inwood. And those 32 miles of track, you get to experience the longest express run in the system, an epic ride across the Jamaica Bay and the beaches of the Rockaways. About 600,000 riders daily use the A train, and was featured in Duke Ellington's Take the A Train. Wait a moment, our stop, Rockway Park, is not a stop on the A line. Okay, we transfer. What line do we have to take? Since the summer is approaching and there are more people going to the Rockways for recreation, I think it is appropriate to talk about the appendix of the New York City subway system, the Rockway Park Shuttle. So what exactly is the Rockway Park Shuttle? The Rockway Park Shuttle is a five-station, three-mile shuttle line in the Rockways. It serves the western portion of the Rockway line and was originally part of the LIRR Rockway Beach branch that extended all the way up to the LIRR main line. In 1950, a fire broke out on the Jamaica Bay Trestle and the LIRR sold the southern half to New York City. New York City rebuilt the line and the line opened with the Rockway Park Shuttle. Originally, the Rockway Park Shuttle ran to Euclid Avenue, with C or local E trains providing through service to Manhattan during rush hour. But as time went on, the services became more varied, as some shuttle trains began ending at Broad Channel. In 1993, a service revision occurred, where all Rockway Park Shuttle trains ended at Broad Channel, with A trains providing the through service to Manhattan. Anyway, what is my verdict for the Rockway Park Shuttle? It exists, but its mere existence demonstrates how not to design a transit line. The first thing is the frequencies. The Rockway Park Shuttle runs every 20 minutes throughout the day. Even though it goes down to 15 minutes during rush hour, the service it provides is still bad. If you miss your shuttle train, it is an instant 15 minute or more wait. Not good. With these low frequencies, it makes it impossible to plan your daily schedule using the shuttle. For example, if you live near Beach 90th Street and work at Rockway Park, you have to time your trips to ensure that you aren't stranded at either station for the next 15 minutes. That becomes stressful, as a typical 5 minute trip could turn into 20 minutes, quadrupling the total travel time. As a result, many people would only use the shuttle if they are going to Manhattan. If they are making inter-Rockway trips, it is either the Q53 or the Q22. At least the Q22 runs every 7 to 8 minutes, and the Q53 runs every 8 minutes during rush hour. That isn't the best, but is nowhere as bad as the Rockway Park Shuttle. Given how many of the Rockway Park Shuttle residents live and work locally, the fact that there are such bad frequencies on the shuttle is sad. The shuttle could be more used, except the service on the line is so bad that almost no one uses it. The lesson of the first point is, do not build your train line and then operate 20 minute headways. I wish I did not need to say that, but given how a ton of transit systems around the US are freshly built, only to have some atrocious headways, this is a point worth repeating. It is a waste of money and effort to navigate the political system and construct the line, if you end up running garbage service. Now, onto flaw number two, the lack of good destinations. If you look at where the line goes, it starts in Rockway Park, but ends at Broad Channel. There is not much at Broad Channel, which is why it is the least entered station in the entire system. Although there are some people that work in Broad Channel, there are more that work in Manhattan, JFK Airport, some portions in Queens, and downtown Brooklyn. The fact that the shuttle ends abruptly at Broad Channel means that many riders have to transfer onto the A train. And it would be one thing if the A train is frequent, but psych, it is the same problem where the A train runs every 10 minutes, if you're lucky. So there's the potential that you repeat the exact same wait at Broad Channel. But during rush hours, there are some A trains that run to and from Rockway Park, meaning there's no need to wait at Broad Channel. That would be useful, except those trains run every 20 minutes. No other train in New York City is scheduled to run every 20 minutes during rush hour. Oh wait, never mind. So yeah, we run into the same problem as the shuttles themselves infrequent. Theoretically, at least off-peak, the shuttles are timed with the A train. But I said theoretically, which means in practice, no, it is not. 
This means more often than not, you will be waiting extra if you're heading to Rockway Park. The lesson of this point is, don't end your transit line in the middle of nowhere, or get to the circumstance you need to do that. In this case, do not excessively branch your subway lines, as you don't want to make people in the far out of the system wait even longer than they need to. But even if you need to do that, where you need to separate a branch from the main line, at least make the connecting line more frequent. In this case, try to deinterline so that the A, or E, runs more frequently. I have done a video on trying to maximize the effects of deinterlining on the Rockway branches, so you can go watch it here. The final thing is simply the land use. The land use around the Rockway Park shuttle is not the best. Beach 105th Street comes up as a good example. You first have a giant parking lot right next to the station. Water surrounds two sides of the catchment area. And finally, there is a massive sewage plant right next to the station. Although there are also some high rises near the station, that is all you get. Broad Channel is another notable example, where there really isn't much other than some single family homes and some shops. It also doesn't help that the station is built right next to the water, meaning half of the station's catchment area is wasted. But even the other stations that see moderately good land use, Beach 116th Street, Beach 98th Street, and Beach 90th Street are limited by the simple fact that there isn't much land around those stations. At these stations, when you go one block north, you hit water. When you go two blocks south, you hit water. When you go east to west, you hit another station. This lack of land limits the catchment area of these stations. If you compare that with the far rockway portion to the east, there is more land to work with. Even if you go to the first station into the rockways, Beach 67th, the land north of the station goes on for about 4 blocks. That presents the opportunity to do more of the land, and the Rockways has taken this opportunity and ran with it. There are more shops, restaurants, and housing all packed into the catchment area, which is why Beach 67th Street sees 4 times the ridership of Beach 90th Street of the Rockway Park branch, even though less than a mile separates the two stations. The final station to compare to is Far Rockway which is probably the best stop on the entire Rockway Peninsula. Here, not only do you have the land north of the station to work with, but also land south of the station. This land is well used, with high-rises, shops, and restaurants all accessible. Given these circumstances, this station sees the highest ridership of any Rockway station. So what is the lesson of point three? Do not build your rail lines near water. Now, I am going to cough really loudly. <coughs> North Shore Line. Not just because it is much harder to maintain, aka search up what happened when Hurricane Sandy hit, but also people don't live underwater, which means half of your potential ridership base is gone. If you need to build a rail line, look into building it inland, like what planners did with the Rockway Line in Far Rockway. Or, in the case of Seton Island, build it on Forest Avenue and turn the North Shore Line into BRT. So, given the poor state of the Rockway Park shuttle, this is why it only gets about 3,000 riders per day pre-pandemic. For reference, the Far Rockway branch of the A train gets about 30,000 riders per day. That is a huge disparity for both lines that operate in the same neighborhood. So, what can we do? My answer? Queenslink, Queenslink, Queenslink. I think that Queenslink is the closest project that we can get to a slam dunk especially if we're talking about Queens Transit. It gives a north-south line in Queens, adds capacity to the Queens Boulevard local track, slashes commute times into Midtown Manhattan, and in the context of this video, doubles capacity into the Rockways. One of the reasons why ridership is so low is because the frequencies are so low. No kidding. And the fact that it takes studies to prove this really goes to show the starry state of American city planning. Anyway, there could be more local trips made using the Rockway Park branch, but people don't use it because of how much waiting that is required. However, by building Queenslink, wait times get cut from 15 minutes to 6 to 7 minutes on the Rockway Park branch, whether it is either the A train or the M train. This makes it much more attractive to the average Rockway Park resident and will help increase ridership. There really isn't anything else you can do with the land scenario as expanding the rockways is extremely expensive, so increasing service will be key. After all, there's an untapped potential here, as about 13,000 people live in Rockway Park, with a huge portion commuting within the neighborhood 
and an even bigger portion commuting to Manhattan. Therefore, with this service increase, ridership can already be increased by a few times, which honestly would be good enough. And with that, this marks the end of this video. What are your thoughts on the Rockway Park Shuttle? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.